Okay, folks, welcome to the YouTube channel today. I'm at a very interesting place. It's called Caesarea Philippi. Um, you have a, a Caesarea by the sea in Israel, and you have Caesarea Philippi. When you see the word Caesarea, it actually comes out of that word for Caesar. And Philippi is because there was a, uh, uh, an individual ruling in this area by the name of Philip. So that's where you put the two words together. Now, it's the most... Uh, interesting place in the New Testament as it relates to a revelation that Simon Peter had. It says this in Matthew's gospel. When they came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I am? And they said, well, some say that you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Some say that you're John the Baptist. And he said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said to him, you are the Christ, the Christos, the anointed one, the son of the living God. Jesus replied to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed unto you my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto you that thou art Peter upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That statement, that revelation by Peter occurred right here where we're at right now. And I will explain to you the significance of this place, all right? If you will look, this cave, this very large cave that you're looking at on the mountain, was actually a cave in which there was an image of Baal placed. They say that may be one of the oldest caverns that has been discovered in the world where an idol sat, and it was the idol to Baal, and it could go back to the time of Joshua, when God allowed the children of Israel to take the promised land. Then up at the top, you see two niches, and you see little columns that are cut into the rock with an arch. That's where the Greek god Pan sat. Now remember, in the time of Jesus, <clears throat> Pan was in that niche and in the other niche, and this was a place where the Greek gods were worshiped. Now Pan is the god of the forest and the woods, but is also the god of sexuality, the god of fertility. And so that's why he was worshiped because people believed he could help in the fertility of a woman barren having children, of course, which is not true. But that was the custom among the Greeks who worship idols. But what is really interesting is this right here. This is a cave and you can't see it, but it has water in it. Now, what is interesting about this cave is that it was so deep that they did not know where the source came from. And so they said, in, now this is back in the old time, this could have gone back 3,000 years ago, but it definitely went back to the time of Christ, where they believed it was an entrance to the underworld. Some even taught that it may be the entrance to the gates of hell or the underworld where we would say today an entrance to hell. Why is that important? Because when Jesus is here and he says, who am I? There's all sorts of gods here, false gods. <clears throat> and then he says, or Peter says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus talks about the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And of course, the gates of hell means the authority of hell, the systems of hell, the evil that comes out of hell, which really refers to the demonic kingdom or the evil kingdom. But what is really, really neat is if you think about the setting of in the time of Christ, the water was here. It was so deep, they did not know where the source was. They thought if you went deep enough in it, you would actually be at the entrance of the gates of hell, or what we would call, I guess a better term, <clears throat> would be the entrance to the underworld. So think about it for just a moment, the setting that we're in. Now, is this an entrance to the underworld? And the answer is very unlikely because it is simply a place that in that time, because of the depth of the water and the unknown source, because it was so deep, was considered by tradition or superstition to be a entrance to the underworld. Are there entrances to the underworld? Well, the answer is absolutely true, especially when you read scriptures like Job, there's some inferences in the book of Isaiah that there are entrances underneath the earth or chambers underneath the waters that do go into the underworld. One of those, by the way, when the Euphrates River completely dries up in the tribulation, it says there's four angels bound in the Euphrates that are going to be loosed from their uh, underground chambers and are going to go forth to torment men. So water and spirits under the water uh, actually dates back to the time of Old Testament prophets and also is alluded to there in the apocalypse in the book of Revelation. So you can get this view. Now imagine in the time of Jesus coming here, I want him to get a shot of all the 
<clears throat> you can see the colonnades up here, the beautiful um, ornaments that are carved into the colonnades. Look at the solid rock. Imagine now that in the time of Matthew's gospel, when Jesus says, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Here you've got this solid rock mountain, a solid rock mountain where false gods are, a solid rock mountain, just rock all over the place. So when he says upon this rock, that actually means upon this foundation. But look at the setting. That's the, that's the emphasis I make. Look at the setting of what this was like in the time of Christ upon this rock, the gates of hell and the revelation that the true God was not Pan or Baal or any other Greek idol, but the true God was Christ. See, when you read the New Testament, it's one thing to read it maybe in Canada or Europe and America and try to get a mental impression. But when you come to the Holy Land and you get to see where it was taught and the setting of which it was taught, you see so many other things connected with it. Well, that's my YouTube teaching today, but don't go anywhere because I want you to keep watching for something special. Please subscribe to the channel. Please give it a thumbs up and, you know, get as many people as you can to join us in our Holy Land studies. God bless you. This is Perry Stone. I am so excited to be able to present to you and your family two of the most exciting audio teachings that I have done in many years. Will Jesus Return by 2033? And the special teaching, The Soon Closing Out of the Church Age. Now, I wanna talk for a moment and tell you that I'm not predicting the return of Christ in 2033, but I am saying to you that it is the most pivotal transitional date that we have encountered in our lifetime and in modern history. And I'm going to show you why that 2033 is the most important prophetic date in the prophetic cycle. And we're gonna talk about God's calendar and God's timing and the events surrounding where we are going in the distant future. I also want to present to you a very special teaching, the soon closing out of the church age. The church age is also known as the dispensation of the grace of God, and it will eventually come to a conclusion, Christ's return. Then the wrath of God is going to be globally released in what is called the Great Tribulation. Now on this two audio CD series, you will discover details on how, why, and when this major prophetic transition will occur. Man, this is a very powerful message. It is filled with fascinating new insight and it provides keys to understanding soon coming events. Now you can now get both of these audio CD messages. There are four CDs, four hours of teaching for your love gift of $30 or more. We really need your help to keep manifest on the air. The way that you order this special teaching is by going to perrystone.org and ordering online or call 1-888-21-BREAD toll free and order that way. Or you can also write me at Perry Stone P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee 37320. Now when you call or write, you have to request offer number PR-138. And it is the special brand new prophecy updates. We're hoping to hear from you and we just pray that God will continue to bless you. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.